And now we can compare the difference between the 350Z rear subframe and the Tesla Model S. Real quick guys, we have to say thank you to our sponsor, Turo. Thank you so much for sponsoring the throttle videos and supporting the channel. Now in case you guys don't know what Turo is, Turo is a marketplace where you can borrow cool cars from people like you and me. I've actually used Turo so many times, I borrowed the Alfa Romeo 4C. <laughs> and I also borrowed the Kia Stinger. It's a great way to skip the rental car lines and borrow something that you actually want to drive. The Turo app makes everything really easy and you can also sign up on the website using the link in the video description. The thing that I like most about Turo is how much more affordable it is when compared to the traditional rental car companies. And it's so much easier of a process. They have over 850 makes and models to choose from and now they're available in over 5,500 cities all across the world from US, Canada, and even the UK. You guys, take a second, sign up for Turo, check out the link in the video description, use our code and save some money. Huge thank you to Turo for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. What's up guys? We're back with another vlog today. We've got our 350Z. And we got our huge boxes from Japan. They finally showed up, they cleared customs, and we're excited to open this up and check out what's inside. Go ahead, Rick, let's go. Come on, man, let's get this thing out of here. What is that? I have no idea. Instructions. Instructions. Should we find out? It's, it's funny, there's photos, but there's no... That's perfect. Text. That's my type of freaking thing. I don't do well. Whoa, come here. Come here, get this close up. Check that out. Certificate, Certificate of, of products. products. Damn. Damn! That's official. Hey, it's so the full sticker kit. Check this out. What Damn. is that? This is the door decals. The world famous. That is, the, that is famous. This is the world famous door decal. Bam! Oh yeah. It's crazy to think that this is the only one in the United States. Right? There's only two kits. There's, There's only two kits total. ever. We have one of them, and the other one is in Japan, right? What's going on? Not bad. The lights in here already? Kid is sick. One item at a time. They yeah, I know. I am. Yeah. Oh, is this the wing? Is that the wing? Pull it. Boom. The famous duck tail. Hey, it's got the little certified. Hey, certified. Bunny ones are really straight yeah. up. No, that's just perfect. Rick's Porsche one was very straight up. This one's more high kick. It's like you know, This is for the mesh grill to put in there. Oh. These are tabs. You push the mesh grill in there. Oh, and dude. then this is like epoxy resin they put on top. Yeah, sure. Damn, that's gonna look sick, dude. Yeah, so then it lights up. Hey! 
Thanks, Teach. Ricky and I just thumbed through these directions here. It's really not really directions, it's just pictures, but hey, it's a nice stack of photos and Ricky reads photos, so we're solid. <laughs> but essentially what this is telling us is that it's mainly for the front end, for the face swap. This is a 370Z face on a 350Z. So we have to modify the core support in, which we don't have. In a few minor areas to make the headlights fit and then also apply some brackets to hold the headlights in place. Not a big deal, we got this. What we don't have is a core support, a bash bar for the front and the rear factory bash bar, and we also need the license patch, the license plate lights, and the front hood latch that goes on the core support. So if any of you subscribers out there have those bits laying around, we're more than happy to buy them from you. Hit us up on the DMs on Instagram. Got five dollars. Let us know what you got. Five bucks. So <laughs> to go over it again, we need the factory plastic core support, the hood latch, uh, the front bumper bar with the uh, mounts, and the rear bumper bar with the mounts. So if you have any of those things, hit us up. Things are changing with the 350Z project. You ready? Sure. Here we go. So now that you guys have seen the Liberty Walk kit, we've gone ahead and yanked it off the car because it's pretty much gonna take a back seat for a little while. Yeah, we have some explaining to do. We decided we're changing directions with this build. <laughs> How about a complete 180? <laughs> yeah. So you guys know that we were gonna do a 2J in this car, and we already bought stuff. We already have the stuff to do the swap, but we decided to call an audible, and I guess that's where the explaining has to come in. You guys probably don't really care what engine goes in the car for the most part, as long as we do something cool. And we think the route we're about to go down now is not only cool, but it's gonna challenge us even more than just your basic run-of-the-mill engine swap, which seems to be getting done on every YouTube channel. And I've never seen this done. Me either. So that was another thing. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's yeah. just that we haven't seen it. And uh, we think that we want to challenge ourselves and we're gonna put a Tesla motor in this 350Z. Test the whole power plant. The basically. whole power plant. So what, 600 foot pounds of torque like this yeah. on demand? Now before you get crazy, because people <laughs> are like, oh no, 2J is the best, right? Um, the, the 2J has been done. We literally have one here, and we helped with this swap. Yep. It's awesome, reliable, you know, great power plant. Yep. We wanted to do something that was 
totally outside the box. We know that we could do a 2J in that car. It's easy. It could be done right. like probably well, in like a week. A week maybe? and a half, yeah. yeah, tops. But we want to make this project a one of one, a well, the Liberty Walk kit already makes it special. That makes we want to really make special. it even more special and go over the top. So, so I, I don't know about Evan, but my vision for this car, like when I see it finished, is like a full-on JDM 350Z. So everything is spot on, super low, uh, stretch tire, nice big three-piece wheels. Yes. Liberty Walk one of one body kit um, in the States, but Tesla powered. Yeah. So that we're gonna have to test the brakes. It's like super a little hint of Tesla, yeah. and obviously it's not gonna make the same noise as a gas engine. Yeah. And that's um, undeniable. Yeah. We, we all wanna hear that noise, but I think the challenge of actually putting this Tesla drivetrain into a 350Z for me uh, means a lot more than any noises that would come out of it. So if we can pull this off, or yeah. when we pull this yeah. off, it's gonna be it's pretty. It's gonna be a special car. It's gonna be totally different than anything we've ever done. I'm very excited, you know, to learn probably. Yeah. Like none of us that's, have ever done an electric conversion before. Right. And that's I think where yeah. all of us have yeah. a lot to learn is that we've never fiddled with an electric car. So batteries, how to wire all the batteries. Yeah. Safely, right? <laughs> how about how about cooling? Yeah. Like we're not just gonna chuck a radiator in this thing, right? Yeah. It's oh, it yeah. actually has cooling lines and the motors are cooled and like a typical uh, piston engine or a rotary engine, but it's a completely different configuration. So we have a heap of learning to do. Learning and, and research and all that. Making us more well-rounded car guys. Yeah. And you know, the other part of it is that we want to share that experience with you. That's why we're going to be creating content as much as we can um, on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing the electric conversion, Liberty Walk 350Z with the 370Z front end, <laughs> Uh, do us a favor, do us a solid, help us reach our goal of 500,000 subscribers. Subscribe today, turn on the post notifications. You guys have no idea how much that means to us and how, how much that helps us grow and, uh, and get better at doing what we're doing. So, so thankfully our friend over at Autobahn, Sean, he actually got us started. Yep. He, he put us in the right direction and we got some Tesla parts. So we want to show you guys that right now. I think now. he challenged that we couldn't do it. I know. He's like, oh yeah. Here, here you go. See, you guys figure it out. See, figure it out, yeah. <laughs> and you know, the other crazy thing is there's no like, there's nothing, we can't look for it. You anything. can't Google it, because <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna find it. There's really, yeah. So, let's show you guys what we got. So what we ordered here is a Tesla Model S, basically rear dropout engine. Um, it's a rear subframe complete with brakes, arms, axles, the motors. Uh, so it's a complete basic subframe setup with all of the um, suspension components that go along with it and braking systems. We wanted to have this here on the shop floor because we need to see if we want to reuse the 350Z subframe and modify it to house all this stuff or if we want to figure out a way to actually put this whole dropout into the back of the 350Z which is what I'm leaning towards. They weren't made to go together so there's going to be a lot of improvising and probably some fabrication involved. Um, this motor as it sits here is not in the appropriate orientation and we're aware of that so for you guys with a keen eye um, it is backwards right now so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get it flipped around get all of the stuff out of the back of the Z that's gonna be in the way and probably put it back on jack stands as it is here and then lower the car over top and then how we can modify the two to make one unit that fits in the car so we'll go ahead and time-lapse all that so you guys can kind of tag along I hope you guys enjoy Good. All right, well everything's, everything's unbolted and unbuttoned. We're about 20 minutes into this project. It was nice getting the car in this condition because there was no differential and no axles to undo. Not that I would have had to undo them, but it would have added a lot more weight and made this thing a lot more difficult to, uh, to manage. And now we can compare the difference between the 350Z rear subframe and the Tesla Model S. So what we're gonna check first is the overall width just to make sure we're in the right ballpark. Now, obviously we have the Liberty Walk wide body kit, which makes the car quite a bit wider. What, four inches wider? Yeah. Four or five inches wider. Right, let's see if we can swap maybe the whole subframe and let's just check the overall width to see if we're in the right ballpark here. Hub to hub. Hub to hub. 
Okay. As best we can, I suppose. Something like that. 63 inches. Okay. Ah! What? It's a lot. 69. 69? 60. 69. So six inches wider than factory. That's a lot of offset, but we do have the Liberty Walk kit. Oh, so you're saying we have to run high offset wheels. For me, the benefit of using this entire rear subframe is it's kind of like plug and play and all the geometry works, right? If we have to basically put the motors and that componentry into the 350C one, it's gonna be a lot more fabrication, I think. So actually being 69 inches, that's not terribly out of the ballpark, I don't think. So our shock is angle. the angle if we use the stock upper mount and we don't do some sort of uh, realignment, which yeah. I think is okay. Um, but as you can see here, this is a fork style and we have an eyelet style mm -hmm. on the Tesla. So custom we're gonna strut. have to do a custom strut. So yeah. it's gonna have to have an eyelet type bottom with a uh, two bolt mount top for our chassis unless we cut that out and put a Tesla top mount, which mm -hmm. maybe it's probably easier to make our own strut yeah. combination than to cut and weld. Let's check the distance between the subframe mounts themselves. Yeah, this is just rough ballpark in here. About 22 and a half. 22 in that direction. 23. Okay, pretty close. Now let's check the width. It's pretty close. It's pretty close, dude. 35 and a half at the rear. And this one, holy cow. 44. It's about 44. And then the front of the subframe, Tesla, about 42, 37 and a half. So the reason why I, I was asking that is, so in the rear of the 350Z, this is how the rear subframe mounts. It has these studs that are basically, you know, welded onto the unibody. And the question is, is are we able to potentially move them or fabricate new ones, but still kind of use the same real strong structural rigidity area? That could be an issue. This one, it seems like you could go narrower or wider to some extent, right? Yeah, that's not terribly difficult to extend that. You should call Elon. Mm. He says, sorry, bro. So now that we've got a clear view of how the bottom of the car looks without the subframe in place, we can actually start making some decisions on what to get rid of. Obviously, this car's gonna be electric now, so we don't need fuel, which means this whole saddle tank can get dropped out of the car and remove. That's gonna open up a bunch of room underneath the chassis. And this is actually really valuable space. We can actually put maybe some of the batteries here and help distribute the weight because the remainder of our batteries are gonna be up where the engine used to be. Uh, the other thing that we can get rid of is the evaporative system, which because we're no longer running a uh, fuel burning engine that creates pollution, we don't need this anymore. This is a pollution control device that is no longer necessary. So we can remove that as well. Being able to remove all these things is a huge relief because it allows us to have more space to work with that bigger subframe. So I'm gonna get that stuff out now and we can sort of uh, eyeball how that's gonna fit under here or if it's gonna fit under here now. Alright guys, well, Ricky finally showed up. Hey, you know. I've been here for a while, don't even go there. Well, 
for all intents and purposes, he just showed up because you guys have been with us here for the majority of the day while I've been fitting, or actually retrofitting the 250Z, taking all the old crap out that we don't need anymore for this uh, electric conversion. And Ricky uh, got here uh, just a little bit ago and he's been helping me get the subframe basically lined up and in place. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of how that looks. And that's all you get for today. The next video is gonna be Ricky and I chopping the heck out of this 350Z to, uh, Which is what we do best. to make this thing fit. And we've got a really good idea of how we're gonna do that already, which is awesome because it's actually pretty straightforward. We just have to get our welder fired up and go get some materials from the, uh, the metal supply shop. So it's not gonna be long. This thing's gonna actually be in the car and then we have to start planning our wiring, routing, the controller location and all the batteries and building those trays and things. So it's gonna be a lengthy process. This is probably the easiest part of the process is the mock-up stage, yeah. I'd say. But yeah, we'd like some feedback from you guys. Um, this is an oddball project and we know that and that's why we're doing it. But I would love to know in the comment section because we do read that stuff, as you guys know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, if you guys think this is something you wanna see us do or uh, if you think that uh, we should go another direction. But number one question, should we go through with a Tesla power plant in this 350Z? I think we should, but we'll leave it up to you guys. It's different. It's definitely different. Do. So let us know down below, guys. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for all the thumbs up. We appreciate it and all the awesome comments. We'll see you guys in the next one with some modifications. <laughs>